Qi Xiaqing has been wearing it for several years without any problems, but suddenly she was bound to the upward system after changing dynasties. Either work hard for your career or die. Fortunately, I met Emperor Yongzheng of the liver. From then on, we began the happy fishing life of issuing tasks to the emperor. Salted fish and liver emperor's daily activities. System. Specially favored for 15 days, rewards advanced firearms manufacturing drawings. Qi Xiao. No need. Yin Xiang. Your Majesty, the Northwest War is tight Yongzheng. I reluctantly make it difficult. Growing female lead, from salted fish to cherishing the world, from appreciation to fighting side by side keywords of the novel. After clearing, I bound the Shangjin system without a pop dot up window. After clearing, I bound the Shangjin system to download the complete TXT collection. After clearing, I bound the Shangjin system to read the latest chapters. Chapter 1 Ten Years of Qin Chuan. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 1 Ten Years of Qin Chuan Under the clear sky for thousands of miles, there is still a thin mist above the Qingxi Mausoleum. Emperor Yongzheng Yin Zhen gazed at the capital in mid air, even though he had not been physically present for a hundred years, with only a trace of soul consciousness remaining here. When the old summer palace was burned, he still had a feeling of blood rushing over his head and being repeatedly drenched by ice water. On his deathbed, he once thought of becoming a monk in the next life and traveling through the beautiful rivers and mountains. However, just a hundred years after his death, the world was already scorched earth, with all living beings in ruins. He just wants to transform into a sharp sword and cut off the pain in this world, even if it disappears between heaven and earth and never enters reincarnation, it's better than watching this hellish world entailing every day. At this moment, a cluster of light dots exploded above the tailing mausoleum, and a rainbow burst out from the tranquility of the nine provinces in the old summer palace, dispersing the thin mist in one fell swoop. In the study of Prince Yong's mansion, Yin Jin slowly woke up. Outside his study, there was a cold plum tree. It was just beginning to bloom, and the fragrance of the plum blossoms slipped in, with some even being brought by the breeze and falling at his feet. This gust of wind was clear and refreshing, blowing away the heavy and stuffy atmosphere in the hall. It didn't even carry a hint of coldness, only a faint fragrance wrapped around the tip of the nose. Yin Zhen's eyes suddenly flashed with a glimmer of light. There was never a shortage of offerings in front of the tailing mausoleum, but only the vibrant vitality of this human world was absent. He had not smelled this fresh taste in tailing for many years. He couldn't help but stretch out his hand, wanting to pick up the breeze. Yin Xiang, who was watching from the side, suddenly reached out and grabbed his hand, saying, Fourth brother, you're awake. He was very familiar with this voice, and Yin Zhen suddenly opened his eyes and grabbed the person beside him, saying, Yin Xiang. Yin Xiang has always been closest to him, and seeing his appearance, he was truly startled. Fourth brother, it's me. What's wrong? When Yin Xiang passed away before him, he did indeed choose an auspicious place to build a tomb for him next to the tailing mausoleum. Could it be that the ancestors and ancestors felt that these descendants were too useless, burying all the great rivers and mountains, and trapping him here alone was not enough? They wanted to put his thirteen younger brothers here to suffer such torment like a delay. Yongjing's heart was palpitating fiercely, and his whole body couldn't help but tremble uncontrollably. Are you here too? Where is it? Yin Xiang felt something was wrong, and just now Chang Chenyuan came to report that Emma was seriously ill. The fourth brother felt anxious and dizzy for a moment, and the doctor in the mansion looked at it and said it was okay. How could it be that even though someone woke up, they seemed to be even more excited than before? Yin Zhen held on to him tightly and didn't let go. Yin Xiang felt that his expression was not right, so he asked Su Peixing, the general manager of the mansion, to leave the servants in full screen. He then gently stroked his elder brother's back and said, Fourth brother, what's wrong? Now that Emperor Ama is seriously ill, it's time for his bad mood. 
you can't advise him any more about his second brother being imprisoned. We can also treat him with utmost kindness and righteousness. Am I seriously ill? Is my second brother imprisoned? This happened in the fifty-first year of the Kangxi reign when the crown prince was deposed for the second time. Yin Zhen realized something was wrong, and her wildly beating heart slowly calmed down. Alma is still here, and thirteenth brother looks still young. So, this is not the scorched earth all over the place a hundred years later, nor is it the reincarnation hall on the Naiha Bridge. He doesn't need to go up to the poor and blue land to find a place of peace. The gods and Buddhas in the sky have actually favored him and called him back to the Kangxi dynasty. Yin Xian was not aware of the twists and turns of his thoughts in his heart, and was a bit anxious. Fourth brother, is this a time to be stunned? After a while, Emperor Ama woke up. Perhaps he wants to summon you into the palace. You should pick yourself up a bit. As he spoke, Yin Jin suddenly grabbed his hand. It's warm, it's young. Yin Jin closed her eyes and let out a long sigh of relief. This is his thirteen younger brothers, this is his Yongwang mansion, and this is his mortal world. All of this seems to be in time. In the imperial garden, three or five young palace maids were huddled in a small pavilion, chatting softly. The owner of the Forbidden City went to Changchun Garden to recuperate, and it has been over a month since they were in the palace. The general manager's control over them is not so strict. At this moment, the wind was strong, and although the plum blossoms had bloomed, their flower shapes were not beautiful enough by the wind. It took them some time to reluctantly select a few suitable ones for vase insertion, and as it looked like it was going to rain, they lazily hid in the pavilion. The little girl stomped her feet and rubbed her hands, Sister Xia, when do you think the emperor will come back? If only he could come back after winter. Qi Xia was the leader of these little girls. Seeing her fingers turn white from the cold, she took the small flower basket in her hand and helped her carry it. She worked in a fast dot paste internet factory for fifteen years, and finally became financially free. She was ready to resign and lay flat. When she woke up, she found herself somehow put into the body of the girl of the same name in the Qing dynasty. Fortunately, as soon as she arrived, she noticed a salted fish system in her mind, and the tasks given by the system were quite simple. Most of the time, it involves cooking a dish, making a ingluo, learning a guqin tune, embroidering a flower, etc. The completion deadline can take several months, and the rewards provided are also very good, a variety of fancy eating, drinking, and entertainment treasures, from health soup, beauty pills, and fitness exercises to lost recipes, music scores, and chess scores, Sure Hai also provides her with unlimited TV dramas, movies, and various novels and magazines. Anyway, the system can provide all the entertainment items she wants. Even though she turned 16 in the first two years and was sent to the palace by her family, she remained calm. After all, her body is very capable of reincarnation. Although her father is not very famous, her uncle is actually an important minister of Urtai and Yongzheng. If it's not a big deal, she will spend ten years in the palace. When Yongzheng ascends to the throne, her parents and uncle will go to beg for mercy and release her from the palace. She can still lie down happily both physically and mentally. Even at that age, there is a high probability that there is no need to get married and have children. These days are so fascinating to think of. The point is that she was still a brainless Yongzheng in anime. In those days, some Qing dynasty dramas were popular. She used to copy the keyboard and argue with people for a long time. Yongzheng's merits and demerits were popularized. If you stay in the palace, you can have a chance to see this reform, with extreme love and hatred, short protection and glass heart, excellent aesthetics, and love to have a cosplay in her spare time. It is also a fulfillment of her anime dream of a girl. The other palace maids also chattered and urged Qi Xia to tell them half of the story she had told before. Qi Xia nodded and agreed. She had done some activities at home before entering the palace, 
and the tasks assigned to her in the palace were simple. She only needed to be responsible for tidying up the heart-nourishing hall and adding fresh flowers, fruits, and tea snacks every day. Emperor Kangxi liked to live in gardens, and the heart-nurturing hall came very rarely. This job was both dignified and leisurely, and there was no need to interfere with the open and secret struggles of the concubines in the harem. She had nothing to do and also enjoyed teasing these little girls. The little palace maids immediately became excited and quickly tidied up the cut flower branches, urging her to hurry back. A few people walked back, talking and laughing, but suddenly a thick bell rang from the corners of the forbidden city. The imperial garden was already empty, and the bell echoed everywhere, causing people's hearts to stop for a moment. Everyone was taken aback, and suddenly a Zila Zila electromagnetic interference sound came to Chi Xia's mind. The system, which had been silent for several days, suddenly began to broadcast continuously. System error. System error. System error. Qi Xia has been in the Qing dynasty for ten years, and he still has some common sense of life. He knows that this is the sound of a national funeral bell, which can only be used when the emperor dies or the empress dowager dies. There was no empress dowager in the palace in earlier years, but now it is only the fifty-first year of Kangxi's reign, and the crown prince was deposed only twice last month. In theory, there is still a full ten years before the change of dynasty. The error has been corrected, and the system will continue to serve you. It took Qi Xia a long time to come to her senses, and she couldn't help but ask the system, how to fix it. The funeral bell has already sounded, and people can still come back to life from death. That's too sensational. We have fixed the system for you based on parameters from other historical dimensions, and the new system will be activated at the appropriate time. The system fell into silence after speaking plainly. If the mountain is not mine, I will go to the mountain. If the history cannot be corrected, the system will correct itself and take a break accordingly. Qi Xia. It's not impossible, is it? She thinks about fishing every day and has no objection to the occasional strike of this salted fish system. She only whispered to me Yun and the others, everyone be cautious, hurry up and go back to duty. Although the little girls are younger than her, there are mostly fathers and brothers on duty at home, and there are no ignorant ones. They obediently and quietly nod and walk quickly towards the heart-nourishing hall. From inside the palace to outside, it seemed as if everything fell into silence, except for the overwhelming sound of the solemn bell. Gradually, cries came from the harem. Most people have guessed that the owner of the Forbidden City may have already changed. Qi Xia secretly worried that Yong Zheng gradually stepped onto the front desk after the two deposed princes of Kangxi. Can he still succeed to the throne smoothly at this point in time? The original title was sensitive and changed to, after clearing, I bound the upward system, but the content remains unchanged. End of this chapter Chapter 2 The Fall of the Qin Dynasty You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 The Fall of the Qing Dynasty Qi Xia was on duty today. She changed flowers and fruit dim sum briskly and quietly wiped a pair of enamel vases on the flower rack. The little girl beside her, Mi Yun, quietly glanced at her one after another and couldn't help but move over to her side. She lowered her voice and said, Sister Xia, do you think? The Emperor passed away. Are we staying here? The word driving death almost rolled down my throat, I dare not say it. Qi Xia dare not say yes or no. She has read a lot of historical materials about the Kang and Yong dynasties, and still remembers some of the timing of major events. However, the situation has now exceeded her cognitive range, and she is more worried than Mi Yun. I'm afraid it was my little butterfly that flapped its wings, causing a change in history. If the successor to the throne is not Yongzheng, and if her family is implicated Qi Xia was still immersed in her thoughts when Mi Yun pulled her sleeve and saw the group walking into the heart-nourishing hall with light steps. It was said to be a group of people, but in fact, 
a group of palace guards were protecting the two people with their stars and moon. A younger-looking figure in his twenties, with a slender figure, walked slightly ahead in a protective posture, and as soon as he entered the door, he casually inspected the room. The other looked older, clearly only wearing casual clothes and not sharp between his eyebrows and eyes, but it was too intimidating to take a second look. As he entered the heart-nourishing hall, he felt a leisurely and leisurely demeanor. As these two people walked in, the peaceful heart-nourishing hall, which had been quiet for many days, began to become noisy. The older man patted the people around him and said, Inxiang, I've been busy all day. Let's take a break. Qi Xia knelt respectfully to the side, and two words drifted through her mind. Stable. Prince Yi Inxiang was the most trusted and trusted brother of Yongzheng, known as the Executive Vice Emperor. Since these two people are here, history is not far off. With just a few words, Su Peixing has already started arranging people to serve the tea. Qi Xia and Mi Yun were already on duty, so they couldn't get away from each other. Although Kangxi rarely lived in the Hall of Nurturing the Heart, he occasionally received his courtiers here and did the work of serving tea and water, which was not uncommon in the summer. But just as she pinched her wrist to stop shaking and quickly went to serve tea, fireworks suddenly exploded in her mind, with a loud crackling sound. If she had high blood pressure or something like that, she was afraid that a pot of hot tea would be flipped over the new gentleman's head on the spot, leaving her life here. Congratulations, Master. Upward System Startup Main Task of the System To pass the Imperial Examination and become a Jinsher, and enter the Hanlin Academy. Task Reward Beginner Planting Technique, can allocate fertilizer, increase crop yield by 15%. Qi Xia pinched the tea tray tightly, only wanting to strangle the elusive system. What system do you think you are? Upward system. You went to the wrong channel, right? This is the Qing dynasty, and I am a woman. I am going to take the imperial examination today, and tomorrow you can collect my body and find the next owner. Hurry up and exchange it for my salted fish system. Detected changes in the historical process, retrieved 50 million samples from the database, and in such cases, the compatibility between the owner and the system reached 99.9%, .9%, making it impossible to replace the system. Detected that the owner's gender is female. The system has made data corrections and will modify the main task for you, synchronously adjusting the system prompt sound to female voice. The main quest has been changed to Enter the harem and obtain a permanent ban, limited to 30 days. Work hard. Master. Task Reward. Beginner planting technique, can allocate fertilizer, increase crop yield by 15%. Qi Xia's level of artificial intelligence in the system cannot be refuted. Among the countless novels she has read, there are indeed many who return to the Three Kingdoms, the Han Dynasty, and the Ming Dynasty to change the course of history. The standard accessory of this kind of traveler, the Golden Finger, is not only to serve as an official, but also to reach the pinnacle of life when the emperor opens the harem. Qi Xia. It's a perfect match, but I choose to refuse. I don't want to go into the harem. The man that anime likes can only fill his brain in anime, and the man in third dimension can only watch at most, and can't play obscenely. She is very principled. Please pay attention to the completion deadline. If the main task fails, 100 points will be deducted. If the side task fails, 20 points will be deducted. Points below zero will be erased. Friendly reminder, erasing is the process of erasing the body and soul together. Qi Xia rolled her eyes in her heart, thanks to the generous Xian Yu system in front of her. Her points had already exceeded five figures, and even if she had squandered some in the system mall, she still had over 10,000 points. If she deducts 100 yuan per month, she can still lie down for 10 years. Who knows what the future will be like 10 years from now, maybe this system has already been burned to death by her. Playing KPI with me, I'm lying flat. Can you still get me? Black-hearted capitalists. 
After a series of chaotic noises, the system gave a response from the unscrupulous capitalist. Converting initial points, completed conversion, points are 100. But when the progress of the main task of the system reaches 100%, it can help the owner achieve any wish across time and space. Chi Xia. Dot. She could only control herself not to curse and put down the tea tray to serve hot tea. The person in the main seat glanced at her and nodded at the table with unclear meaning, except for Yin Xiang, everyone else is leaving. You, stay and serve the tea. Qi Xia was arguing with the system in her mind while bowing her brows and standing aside with her hands tied down. Yin Xiang was a bit puzzled, thinking that fourth brother noticed something was wrong with the palace maid and clearly increased his vigilance. He glanced around and saw that the little palace maid was dressed in light green palace attire, with a lively expression between her eyebrows and eyes, which looked somewhat pleasing. But although the night seemed calm, the fourth brother inherited the imperial decree with the imperial decree of Ama, but the hidden tide under the surface was surging, but it was never less than before. The eighth brother, fourteenth brother, and even the third and second brothers could all become unstable factors. Even a seemingly harmless little palace maid, he could not relax at all. Yin Zhen picked up the tea cup and put it back on the table. He only raised his eyes slightly and said, who brought it in from? My grandfather was Abai and my father was Ikian. The niece of Urtai, Yin Zhen, squinted her eyes. Do you want to enter the harem and have a permanent title? Qi Xia was stunned. It's just a common reputation. With your family background, I could have rewarded you, Yin Zhen remained calm and even smiled as she turned the bead on her wrist. As long as you are honest, who is the mastermind behind your back? How did the so dot called system task just now spread to you? I don't know what the emperor is saying, I just want to serve him well. Qi Xia regained consciousness and quickly cowed out his head, which was truly a cold sweat. No matter how salty the fish is, she knows that big things are not good. The room was silent, and outside the window, a handful of snow shook off the branches, disrupting the tranquility of the room. Yin Jin didn't speak again, but Yin Xiang had already stood up, dressed in military attire, holding a sword and watching her with caution. Not a word was correct, fearing that she would splash blood on the spot. These two people's gaze was almost frozen, trying to melt through the head around her neck. Qi Xia lifted her head under this gaze. She didn't call the system anymore. The years of free-range farming in the salted fish system have made her more accustomed to thinking on her own when encountering problems. When Yongjing just mentioned the word, system, he was obviously a bit unfamiliar, so he himself was probably not bound to the system, but for some reason he could hear the tasks released by the system. As for why he could hear it, it took a lot of effort, and she didn't have time to think about it anymore. Living is the most important thing. If the rewards given by this system are as real and credible as those given by the salted fish system, this planting technique is equivalent to directly increasing the productivity of agricultural society by 15% and indirectly increasing taxes by 15%. For an emperor like Yongzheng, who was diligent in governance and could be called the liver emperor, this must be a great temptation, even for this reward, she had to keep her life. She dared not say that she was not Qi Xia herself, only that when she woke up a few days ago, it was like a century-old dream. Suddenly, there was a voice in her mind asking her to complete the task. If she couldn't complete it, there might be a risk of her life. She thought that this task was not deceiving the emperor or going against the rules, so she didn't talk to her family and just silently perfunctorily handled this task system. I don't know why, just now you and Thirteenth Master stepped into the heart-nourishing hall, and the original task system suddenly became an upward system, Qi Xia forced herself to flatter. Previously, it released very simple tasks, not upward systems. Perhaps this system thought you were its master. Today, when I saw you, it really started. Although she really thinks that Yongzheng is a good emperor, even boasting about him online, in reality, when she says this, she is still embarrassed that her nails are almost dug into her flesh. 
The anime and the third dimension really have walls. In Xiang sneered and took a step closer to her, but In Zhen waved his hand to stop her. He didn't pay attention to her rainbow fart and only stared at one word. A hundred years of great dreams. How will the national fortune of the Qing dynasty be in a hundred years? Qi Xia murmured, since our country has prospered. In Zhen looked at her coldly and indifferently, with no hint of joy or anger. Really? After thinking it through, you can't bear the crime of bullying your ruler. He remembered the capital he had seen in Tailing, which had gone from a prosperous era to a life full of hardships, in just a short hundred years. He watched as the beautiful rivers and mountains turned into scorched earth, and as thousands of people were displaced. Qi Xia has been staying in the palace for two years, and it's not that she hasn't seen the emperor before. But perhaps as Kangxi grew older, he became more gentle towards his servants, and she had never felt such a sense of oppression. She didn't know where Yongzheng was dissatisfied with this standard answer, and after much thought, she rummaged through all the history books she had read for two lifetimes in her mind. She certainly knew that a hundred years later would be the Opium War, but standing in front of these two princes, Long Sun, even if she were given ten more heads, she wouldn't dare to say, I report to the emperor that the Qing dynasty is about to perish. End of this chapter Chapter 3 Submission System You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 3 Submission System Yin Zhen sat in the upper position, without any sharp words or expressions, and his face even had an unhealthy pallor. Even though there was a dragon burning in the room and it was very warm, he sat there alone, still exuding cold air. Qi Xia unconsciously bit her lip and realized that the person in front of her was the emperor, not the fourth lord, in novels and TV dramas who was affectionate like the sea and spoiled the travelers, nor the fourth lord, who was played with by a few concubines in her hands. It's not even the internet celebrity emperor she learned from history books, who is well governed and has an interesting soul. This is the ruler of the world, who can take life and death. A word can make life or make people die. What she said today is that if he cannot be satisfied, even if he can save his life with system rewards, he will have no freedom in the future. In Zhen looked at her forehead, which was covered in tiny beads of sweat. She remembered her phrase, a hundred years of great dreams, and thought that perhaps she had truly gone through these hundred years of suffering like him. Inexplicably, she felt a little unbearable. Even voluntarily breaking this suffocating silence. If you don't know where to start, I'll wake you up. Let's start with English opium and artillery. This was nothing more than a thunderbolt, which left Qi Xia completely bewildered. For a moment, I forgot the etiquette and stuttered, you. You're wearing. Aren't you, are you reborn? This kind of aura is definitely not like a modern traveler, should it be reborn. So Kangxi passed away ten years earlier, was it the butterfly effect he brought? Yin Jin didn't give her any time to be shocked. He just nodded at Yin Xiang and gestured for him to clean up the outside. On the contrary, his expression softened. Tell me everything you know, and I will fulfill your wish. It's not impossible to appoint you as a nobleman or even a concubine. Qi Xia was still immersed in the huge amount of information about opium and artillery just now, and it took her a while to come to her senses. Yongzheng could have known about the opium war, what else did she have to avoid? Qi Xia gritted his teeth and spoke frankly, yes, the Qing dynasty gradually fell behind the world several decades later. If it fell behind, it would be beaten. The eight-nation alliance of Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, the United States, Russia, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire invaded China. Later, the Qing dynasty fell, and China went through a hundred years of history of being invaded and trampled on. It was only then that someone drove away the aggressors and established a new country. When Yin Xiang arranged to come in outside, he happened to hear the phrase, the Qing dynasty will fall, and his hand trembled, almost going up and twisting the little girl's neck. But he saw his fourth brother sitting on the collapse, exhausted and without any anger. 
Qi Xia is considered a generation that grew up in the spring breeze under the red flag. After a hundred years of humiliation, she would habitually add, but after another hundred years of struggle, we have returned to the forefront of the world, and now we are one of the top powers. A hundred years. He has painfully felt these three light words for over thirty thousand days and nights. Injin clenched his wrist, his eyes turning slightly red. When he spoke again, his voice became dry. If you fall behind, you will be beaten. You said it very well. Qi Xia was more certain that he should have seen the history of a hundred years later. Otherwise, even if his thoughts were more open, a feudal monarch would not be able to calmly discuss the path of national downfall with others. So. Do you believe what I just said? Yin Zhen remained noncommittal and said, As long as you know, I can complete your so dot called system tasks on your behalf. As long as you hand over the task rewards, I can guarantee your lifelong prosperity and prosperity. You should first go to the Yuhua Pavilion to stay, and when you are conferred the title of Empress Dowager, I will also give you the usual title. Those who are aware of current affairs are heroes. Qi Xia has no choice but to thank you. She had just finished kowtowing when the electronic sound of the system rang. Main task. Enter the harem and obtain a permanent ban, limited to 30 days. Status. Completed. The reward has been distributed to the backpack, please check it by the host. The speed at which the host completes the task is really too fast. Sure enough, she is naturally beautiful, and at a glance, she will make the emperor fall. We need to keep working hard and strive for 3,000 favors all at once. The system will continue to provide you with assistance. The mechanical female voice of the system surrounds the ears, providing insincere praise. In the past, she was the only one who heard this thing, just casually listening to the task clearance language of a single-player game. But now, although the emperor's face remained unchanged, he looked at her face with a questioning gaze, even pinching her brow, as if enduring some pain. I believe he also heard this mechanical sound and felt that his aesthetic evaluation had been compromised. Oh, your uncle. Shut up this broken system. I don't want to lose face in front of anime men. Chi Xia felt like her old face was about to be ruined. She quickly grabbed a book called Elementary Planting Techniques from the air and said, Please take a look, Emperor. This system prop is quite in line with the historical background, distributing an ordinary, slightly worn dot out thread bound book, which is the kind of ordinary that cannot be found immediately after being stuffed into a pile of books. She didn't hesitate for a second and quickly submitted it to the country. The two people present, one is the system host and the other is a century old lonely soul. Neither of them felt anything was wrong with taking out a book from the void but they forgot that there was also a pure native Yin Xiang at the scene. Since entering the heart-nourishing hall, Yin Xiang has been shocked and pale one after another. By now, he has become a bit numb and can't understand why his fourth brother, who is so determined, was convinced by these absurd and comical remarks. He frowned and tried to persuade his fourth brother not to believe these messy things, but was a bit confused by this emptiness retrieval. Yin Zhen saw that he was about to kneel down as soon as he lifted his robe, and stopped him, saying, there are no outsiders here. Let's just sit and talk. I dare not trespass. Yin Xiang paid no attention. Yin Zhen didn't know what was on her mind, and her face looked even worse. She said she has dreamed for a hundred years, and the things I have experienced are probably similar. What she said cannot be verified, so it's normal for you to not believe it. How about I tell you about the recent times? He didn't wait for Yin Xiang's answer before continuing, after I ascended to the throne, just as we had discussed before, we will pacify the internal affairs and recover the losses. Although it was difficult to push the joint work of the stalls and the officials and gentry, they were all forcibly pushed down. Despite the criticism of those gentry and scholars, our family's wealth has gradually become rich. I think our family's wealth has become thicker, and many things will be easier to push forward. But on the fourth day of May in the eighth year of Emperor Yongzheng's reign, 
you passed away and left this huge stall to me. I was also seriously ill, and I'm not afraid of your ridicule that day. I have arranged everything behind me. But God forbade it and allowed me to endure for an additional five years. In the thirteenth year of Yongzheng's reign, the fourth elder brother Hongli succeeded to the throne, and some things that were not pushed aside were gradually abandoned Yin Xiang was completely stunned. He didn't realize what his fourth brother had said for half a day. Qi Xia knew that Yongzheng's trust and preference for this thirteen younger brothers were basically beyond measure, otherwise it would be impossible to talk to her about these strange and chaotic things in front of him. She touched her nose, placed the book on the table, and retreated in an inconspicuous place, intending to minimize her presence and let the two brothers discuss the issue of being born, dead, and reborn on their own. Yin Zhen, however, did not intend to spare her and asked the audience, tell me, what title will I give him tomorrow? Qi Xia didn't know why, so she had a feeling of coping with the surprise test. She gritted her head and answered, Prince Yi. Prince Hashua Yi is hereditary and irreplaceable. She still knows this, the only newly appointed Iron Hat King after the Qin dynasty entered the country. As for the posthumous title, she really didn't remember it. The eight or nine characters that Yongjing forcibly added to him were also too long. Friends are eager to meet Sisi, while siblings are happy. If things really happen in the future, I will get a E title. This joke was only said once when the two were young. It is impossible for a third person to know. Yin Jin patted Yin Xiang's shoulder and said, Believe it. Yin Xiang remembered what he had just said, and then looked at the heavenly book that appeared out of thin air on the table. He was both shocked and saddened, saying, Fourth brother. I will die forever. In this lifetime, even if one is a luxurious nobleman, it will only be one death. How can one die for ten thousand? Yin Zhen was very calm and said, For the sake of your fourth brother, let me spare you the crime of leaving me alone to support the main beam. But I have already handled your affairs after you once, and I don't want to have a second one Qi Xiao. It's truly a touching brotherhood, but in fact, it doesn't require an audience. Can you put me back first? Perhaps after Yin Xiang remained silent for too long, Yin Zhen finally shifted his attention to her and said, What's your name? My maid's name is Qi Xia, the pond of the pond, the summer of summer. Yin Zhen nodded and said to Yin Xiang, You can personally keep an eye on it and arrange for some, considerate, people to serve Xia Chang. Qi Xia stumbled. My mind is filled with one line. Then let's reward Xia Chang for being Ten Zhang Red, end of this chapter. Chapter 4 Yongjing's Ascension to the Throne you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 4 Yongjing's Ascension to the Throne, One Zhang Hong, is definitely not there, after all, at this point in time, the entire harem is still the concubines of the former emperor, and everywhere is desolate and miserable. No one noticed that there was a new owner in the Yuhua Pavilion. Yuhua Pavilion has always been inconspicuous in the six palaces of East and West, and has never been the main palace that concubines compete for. The only advantage is that it is close to the Heart Nourishing Hall, and standing in the attic, you can see the lights of the Heart Nourishing Hall. Qi Xia dare not go out and wander at this sensitive time, and it is obvious that the person designated by Yong Zheng to serve her will not allow it. The housekeeper assigned to her in the palace was around forty years old, and the people in the Ministry of Internal Affairs called her Hsiang Aunt, with a little palace maid named Miao Miao. These two are the people serving in the inner courtyard. I think they are all Yongjing's confidants. Qi Xia. You have one Hsiang and one seedling. My name is Qi Xia. It's great, and our yard sounds very farmhouse. The basic planting techniques she submitted are quite compatible, whether it's a coincidence or that the master intentionally reminded her of the value of her existence. Hsiang also gave her face and said, It shows that we have a fate with the young master. The young master should rest earlier. Tomorrow, the young master will have to go to various palaces to thank and kowtow, so we have to be busy. 
Qi Xia had some doubts about how Yong Zheng would bestow the title on her. She was not a gugu or a maid who had served him in the Prince Yang's mansion, nor was she a servant of his Fujin or his side Fujin. The most important thing is that she is not a nameless and familial cat or dog. As long as others have the intention to investigate, her family background and her resume after entering the palace are almost transparent. A person who had never had any contact with Yongzheng on the surface suddenly became a permanent resident. Either he had already been placed in the palace, or on the first night of the new emperor's entry into the palace, the late emperor passed away and the new emperor took the initiative to climb up the bed during his filial piety period. This reputation is not good. Maybe it will come as a small loss of life. Before she could figure it out, Hsiang saw her still standing in the yard and draped a shawl over her, saying, Just now, the emperor was in the heart-nourishing hall, thinking about things and people, and thinking about the late emperor. He was so anxious and lost in thought that he passed out. Fortunately, the young master took good care of her for a long time. At night, the wind was cold, so the young master should not catch a cold. Qi Xia Qi Xia said she has learned. The ability to tell lies with open eyes. The two of them smiled silently, with a hint of deep affection between master and servant. Qi Xia wrapped her cloak tightly and said, Auntie said so. What should I pay attention to when visiting the Empress Dowager and Empress Dowager? The young master is cautious. Today, she is still Empress Dowager De and Four Blessings Jean. He Xiang did not reserve any reservations. Both masters are kind-hearted people and do not like to show off. The implied meaning is that you must not be arrogant and complacent because you are the only newly appointed imperial harem, otherwise even if there is no one Zhang Red, there may be other problems. Qi Xia couldn't help but have no sense of existence, and of course, he couldn't go find someone to show off. Besides, she is just an ambitious, tool person, and if she can't complete the task, she will hang up every minute, so there's really nothing to be happy about. The only thing worth celebrating is probably that her living environment has been greatly improved, upgrading from a two-bedroom apartment to a single-family villa with a small courtyard and a maid and maid. After dismissing Hsiang, Qi Xia buried her face on the soft and warm blanket and rubbed it, enjoying the treatment of a high bed and soft pillow in an independent bedroom. At this moment, he was free from the danger of life and death, and had the leisure to recall the first confrontation with Yongzheng just now. Oh my goodness! I'm doing well. Surprisingly, he became a collaborator with the male god. Rounding it around is equivalent to getting the paper man god without spending money. Although it is nominal. Qi Xia held her face in a daze for a few minutes, but still felt a bit overwhelmed. In order to calm down a bit, I flipped over and sat down to look at my new system. At a glance, I almost jumped up in anger. The style of this system is completely different from her previous, salted fish system, it can't be further streamlined. She has no objection to this, anyway she doesn't like flashy pages. Apart from the task system, there is only one progress bar for the main task, happiness index, which is graying out. Currently, the progress is 1%, with only a slight golden light shining at the beginning. Her desire to break through time and space will only be redeemed when this progress bar is fully read. But this system doesn't even have a mall. She can't bear this anymore. Qi Xia was angry and said, why do I earn points without a shopping mall? The task of becoming a regular in the palace just now gave her 300 points. She originally wanted to see if the prices in the mall were high and what she could buy. Surprisingly, there were no auxiliary props sold at all. Can't she take the food, drink, and play props given by the previous system to make progress? System This system provides prize pools for agriculture, industry, medicine, military, and other fields. The prize pool randomly appears, and any reward is drawn once with 100 points, free for the first time. Ten consecutive draws can choose a fixed prize pool. With its words, a small soft red halo appeared in the void. Tell me earlier. 
She's best at drawing cards. Chi Xia's eyes lit up instantly and she rolled around holding the blanket. She has great luck playing card games and is known by her friends as the detestable Europeans in everything she plays. Confidently raising her hand, a faint golden light fell on her palm. Chi Xia nodded with satisfaction as she looked at Jin Guang. Congratulations on winning a blueprint for a manned spacecraft in the military pool. Level. Craftsmanship, the nodding motion froze halfway. She didn't even want to open the blueprint just by looking at the name. Do you think my grandson can use this thing when he's in his 70s and 80s? Isn't this prize pool based on the actual situation of my dynasty? How many years can we use this blueprint in the development of the agricultural era? System. The reward level is divided into excellent, exquisite, and exquisite craftsmanship. The owner drew the highest level blueprint in one go, truly deserving of being a lucky person with a lucky value of up to 85%. Chi Xia. Thank you so much. She has been salting fish for so many years, and today she has been aroused by this system with a long-lost desire to win. She angrily hammered her pillow and said, Come on, draw again. I don't believe it's possible to make two consecutive SSRs. Another golden light flashed. Congratulations on extracting a drawing of a nuclear power plant from the industrial pool. Level. Craftsmanship, the host is really lucky, give a thumbs up for your good luck. Chi Xia's eyes darkened, and she never expected her proud good luck to crumble here. I felt a little distressed and wasted 100 points. She doesn't have any left in total. Stay away from gambling and cherish points. Chi Xia covered the blanket and didn't plan to take care of the system anymore. However, in a blink of an hour, she found herself shamefully suffering from insomnia. On a deep winter night, lying in a warm bed and holding a warm blanket, she surprisingly lost sleep. Chi Xia rubbed her face and helplessly flipped through the inventory left by her ex-system, looking for a movie she had not watched before, ready to close her eyes and entertain herself. That will earn more points. She bought all the award.winning films and TV dramas from major film and television festivals at once, as well as many that she hasn't watched. This is an emotional film that tells the story of a girl who, after being hurt by a scumbag, suddenly looks back and realizes that her unknown and cowardly husband is the true love. Great, even watching a movie feels like I've been mocked. The situation of this female lead is very consistent with her current state of mind. I used to think that the salted fish system was particularly salty, but now I see, isn't it more considerate than this unlucky system? Yongzheng is truly the ultimate winner of the Nine Dragon succession, with the advantage of being reborn once again. Even if the time of Kangxi's death was advanced by ten years, it did not affect his speed of ascending the throne. When the first ray of sunshine in the morning shone into the Forbidden City, the sound of Shan Hu's long life had already spread from the previous dynasty to the harem. The Ulanara clan of Fujin was naturally granted the title of Empress, while the Li and Nian clans of Fujin were granted concubines. The Nuhulu and Gung clans both had princes and were granted concubines. The names of these people are basically the same as the history that Qi Xia knows, with the only variable being the Nuhulu clan. Perhaps the shadow cast by the son of the black sheep, Qianlong, on Yongzheng was too great. Nuhulu was not granted the title of Empress Shi, but instead became a virtuous concubine. Although the official edict of enfiefment was not issued until the first year of Yongzheng's reign, the layout of the harem was basically established. Except for the few people with names and surnames in Prince Yong's mansion, there were only two nobles who agreed, and she was always present. The scale of this harem is indeed not large, and even far less than the number of imperial concubines and concubines left by Kangxi. Chi Xia watched a movie for half a night yesterday and managed to barely sleep. When she woke up early, she was not very energetic. He Xiang brought Miao Miao in to take care of her grooming. Seeing her dark circles under her eyes, she nodded and said, I was already saddened by the death of the late emperor, and I have taken care of the emperor's half-night stay. 
I believe I haven't rested well. You say so, right. Thank you, Auntie, Chi Xia said kindly with a gentle hum, this is what the maidservants should share, Hsian respectfully combed her hair. After combing, the young master will go and greet the queen. End of this chapter. Chapter 5 Branch Line Tasks You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 5 Branch Line Tasks It is easy to transition from frugality to extravagance. In just a few minutes, Chi Xia adapted to the task of having someone take care of combing her hair and washing her face, and only wondered, we don't need to go and greet the Empress Dowager. If you want to go, later on, I will follow Empress Qi to pay respects to the Empress, and then Empress Qi will lead everyone in the harem to Yongha Palace to pay respects. He Xiang tidied up for her and chose a plain silver hairpin. It's still during the national mourning period, and the harem must be dressed in plain clothes. After paying respects to the Empress, I will gather together to guard the spirits. Miao Miao handed over a very delicate and small stove and said, Master, hold this. It's cold now, and staying outside has already frozen your hands. Qi Xia took it over and touched it. The temperature was just right, hot and not too hot to touch. It was hidden in her sleeve and couldn't be seen at all. Thanks to the brainwashing skills of TV dramas, before meeting Empress Qi, Qi Xia had only one impression of her. Pink and delicate, how old are you now? When I truly saw Empress Qi herself, I realized that she was a bright and beautiful woman. Even though she was almost thirty years old, she could not be considered young in the Qin dynasty. However, her appearance was still one of the best among the people in the harem. Talking about pink, even the most vibrant color, her face can definitely hold it down. It can be said that light makeup and heavy application are always suitable. Compared to her, Nian Shi, who also held the imperial concubine position, could only be described as delicate and graceful. Her figure was graceful and graceful, giving her a slightly weaker Lu Fufeng feeling compared to the other concubines. Nuhulu and Gung are both concubines, and their fourth and fifth elder brothers Hongli are both under three years old and of similar age. They seem to have a good relationship and walk together wherever they go. The remaining few nobles often agree and remain almost silent. The legitimate son of Empress Ulanara passed away prematurely in the 43rd year of Kangxi's reign. He had no children in the past seven or eight years and looked not very energetic. He was about the same age as Empress Qi, but not as young in appearance. But she was very kind to the concubines, and Qi Fei led the crowd to greet her. Just as Qi Xia's knee touched the ground, he called for exemption. Based on the initial impressions of these individuals, it should not be difficult to survive in the harem, after all, Emperor Yongjing was known for his diligence and did not spend much effort or time in the harem, so there was nothing to contend with. The room was filled with old acquaintances, only her being a newcomer. The Empress's gaze paused when she saw her, and she said, even if Xia Chang is here, there is no need to be polite. From now on, she will be under the same roof, and over time, she will become familiar. Your aunt often comes and goes to the mansion. It seems that they all assume that she left her uncle's relationship with Ertai and entered the harem. Chi Shima acquiesced and prepared to play the role of a well-behaved and brainless little Chang. Follow the empress to pay her respects. The system, however, did not want her to continue, and released a series of tasks in one go. Main Task Empress Dowager De will receive the title of Empress Dowager and move to Shokong Palace, with a time limit of 30 days. Task Reward 300 points, 1 pack of improved seeds. Branch Task 1 Planting experimental fields in the palace with improved seeds. Task Reward 50 points, Branch Task 2 Protect Prince Yi Xiang from injury at Yongha Palace. Task Reward 50 points yesterday, Qi Xia did a lot of psychological construction for herself. Although the task of planting experimental fields in the palace sounded absurd, she just paused in her footsteps and immediately followed the concubines as if nothing had happened. 
At the entrance of Yongha Palace, in the freezing weather, the palace gate was wide open, and a few people were kneeling in the courtyard. Upon closer inspection, the person in charge is still an acquaintance. Prince In Xiang of Heshuoyai, who has just taken office today. In Xiang knelt upright and kowtowed respectfully, I respectfully request the Empress Dowager to be granted the title. The person kneeling next to him was dressed in the same attire as Yin Xiang, presumably another prime minister, Prince He Shuol Yen, who was originally the eighth elder brother Yin Si. Seeing the Empress leading the crowd over, both of them stood up and bowed, then knelt down slightly to the left and said, I respectfully request the Empress Dowager to be conferred the title. The Queen returned a gift and was about to speak when she heard a furious rebuke from inside. Are you here to invite or force the palace? This kind of invitation cannot be borne by the palace. Qi Xia still remembers her side mission. When she saw Yin Xiang just now, she moved towards him without a trace and quickly reached out to block it as something smashed out. She was hit hard on her arm and couldn't help but hiss in pain. Looking down, it turned out to be a glass teacup. Good guy, if you hit your head this time, you might end up with a broken head and blood flow. Task 2 of the branch line has been completed, and the reward points have been distributed. In Xiang obviously didn't expect the Empress Dowager to be so stubborn and unwilling to be granted the title, let alone to see the usually kind Empress Dowager lose her composure and directly hit him. After a moment of confusion, he turned his head to look at her. I'm a bit surprised. Qi Xiaxin said, don't look at me like this. I'm just trying to earn more points to draw a 10-game streak, to clear my previous shame. The concubines in the harem were also startled. Gung Shi was closest to her, so she quickly helped her and said, Is Xia Chang okay? Do you want to send the imperial physician to take a look? It's okay, it's okay, Qi Xia moved her wrist and quickly waved her hand. Thank you for your concern. Gung frowned and said, it's all scratched on the back of my hand. It's such a big cut. Hurry up and find someone to bandage it, don't leave a scar. The Empress did not expect such a thing to happen the day before she came to pay respects to the Empress Dowager. She was still hesitating whether to pass on the Imperial Physician, but was interrupted by the sound of running behind her. Su Peixing ran towards Yongha Palace panting heavily, but before he could enter, he pulled open his voice and said, Oh my, your highness Iwang is so easy to find a servant. The emperor is in a hurry to discuss with you. Why are you still here? Qi Xiaxin said that Su Gongdang's acting skills are a bit exaggerated. Most likely, Yongzheng just heard about the branch task released by her system and sent someone to help his thirteenth brother out of the encirclement. Yongzheng succeeded to the throne ten years earlier, and now Yin Xiang is only twenty-six years old. He has been extremely talented since childhood, excelling in both academic studies and archery. He was highly valued by Kangxi since the age of ten, and was greatly favored before the deposed crown prince. Although he has been repeatedly criticized and neglected by the late emperor in the past three or four years, his fourth brother immediately rose to the throne and directly conferred the title of Prince Heshuoyai. Prince Yi in this lifetime is far from the thirteen elder brothers who only gained recognition after ten years of sparring, and his temperament is naturally not as tolerant. He has been kneeling here for almost an hour. If it weren't for the concern that the Empress Dowager's refusal to be granted the title would have brought shame to his fourth brother and made him bear the reputation of not having a proper position, he would have stood up and left long ago. Now borrowing Su Peixing's words, he patted his sleeves and stood up. He also took the opportunity to bow his hand to Yin Shi, saying, The Emperor summoned you. I dare not delay, so please continue to advise the Empress Dowager here. This is quite damaging. Qi Xia muttered to herself, but couldn't help but think that Yin Xiang took two steps and turned around to look at Su Peixing. I remember Dr. Lu was at the Emperor's place asking for a safe pulse. Since this Empress was injured, why don't you go with Duke Su to see Dr. Lu to prevent the Empress from passing on another doctor? Yes, Su Peixing agreed with a chorus of voices. Today, the weather is cold and cool. 
Dr. Liu is leading people outside the Qianqing Palace to make anti-cold soup for the royal families and ministers. Xia Chang is coming with the servants. Please have Dr. Liu bandage it. The Empress is having a headache here. The Empress Dowager refuses to be in theft. Who should lead the harem to guard the Qianqing Palace, and she doesn't care about her small role. She nods repeatedly and says, Xia Chang is injured. There's no need to go to the gathering today. Wrap up and go back to your own palace to rest. Qi Xia was a bit hesitant at first. Her main task needs to be completed at Yongha Palace. But upon receiving Yin Xiang's gaze, he immediately became calm. It is well known in history that Empress Dowager de favored her youngest son and did not like Emperor Yongzheng. The three feet of ice was not a day's cold. Anyway, she won't be able to come up with a solution for a while. When the sky fell, there was a tall person standing against her, and she couldn't think of it. Let these two guys think about it. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Improved Seeds You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 7 Lucky Card Pool you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 7 Lucky Card Pool Chapter 7 Yongzheng did not agree with Qi Xia's proposal, but instead asked another question. I heard your system report several changes in your points last night. What did you do? Qi Xia. I don't really want to bring up this issue. Until now, the more I think about it, the more angry I become. But under the eaves, how can one not bow their head? She could only truthfully explain the existence of the prize pool and the fact that she had won the exquisite craftsmanship twice in a row and produced two blueprints. Saying it's a blueprint, it's actually two books that are three to five centimeters thick. She did a little flipping yesterday, but even if her science grades were top dot notch back then, with a 985 bachelor's and master's degree, she couldn't understand it at all. Not to mention these two ancient people, this is probably completely beyond their cognitive scope. Sure enough, Yongzheng and Yinxiang flipped through for a quarter of an hour, and finally returned the item to her. You should keep it for now. Yinxiang said, is it really possible that this ingenious thing exists? Why not take a look at the rewards at the level of excellence and refinement? Existence exists, but it may not develop for two or three hundred years. Qi Xia was like a gambler being urged to draw cards. Let me draw another one. Under normal circumstances, the probability of reaching the highest level three times in a row is really not high. Her heart moved with the thought. She poked at the aperture that appeared out of nowhere, and she felt a bit moved. Yongzheng and Yinxiang both looked at her. Qi Xia closed her eyes a bit. Congratulations on drawing a generator in the industrial pool. Level. Excellent, Qi Xia breathed a sigh of relief, the system finally didn't embarrass her. This may be a device that she can barely use in her lifetime. Yongzheng had seen the thing, electricity, entailing, but his understanding of it only stayed at the fact that it could provide lighting. He was truly shocked when Qi Xia briefly popularized the widespread use of electricity, holding the blueprint and looking at it again and again. This blueprint is much simpler compared to the first two, and Qi Xia's basic skills are not yet abandoned, so he can basically understand it. But she had to interrupt Yong Zheng's interest. Your Majesty, draw 100 points once. My current points, even if I don't draw, are only enough to ensure that I give up a main task. If you want to continue the lottery, you have to do the main task. How about I go talk to the fourteenth brother and ask him to go to the palace to persuade the Empress Dowager? Yin Xiang and Yin Gui are of similar age, and their relationship from childhood to adulthood is not bad. The Empress Dowager may be willing to listen to fourteenth brother's words. Do you think you didn't try it back then? After facing the question of the need to have the Empress Dowager be in theft and move to the palace, Yongzheng clearly felt a bit restless. Including the illusions she just mentioned about Cheng Bo and Wu Jiang, 
you also went to Yongha Palace without me for two hours and knelt for two hours, breaking them up and rubbing them to pieces before telling her. Didn't you persuade me? Qi Xiaxin said that Empress Dowager Da's mentality may be, I understand all the principles, but I just feel that this is unfair to my younger son. You are my son, and I will do it. If you don't listen to me, it is unfilial. This is a bit difficult. After all, when dealing with bare children, she can also make some delicious and funny tricks in the 21st century. When dealing with an old lady, she can't show her the square dance competition or the TikTok Kwai short video, can she? Even if she dares to recognize the content of the sea, she cannot show it to others. Well, let me think about it again, Yongjing pinched his nose and waved his hand to Yin Xiang. Don't stick around here. You haven't slept all night, do you think you're a tough guy? You can handle it, I can't bear it either. Let me calm down. Yin Xiang couldn't think of any other way for a moment. Seeing that Yongzheng was really tired, he decided to leave according to his words. Qi Xia also wanted to leave and said, Your Majesty, should I also retire first? Wait a moment, Yong Zheng looked tired and closed his eyes for a moment before gesturing for her to come and serve tea. She did this job often when she was in the heart-nourishing hall, but can't you consider that I am still an injured person, your majesty? Qi Xia rose in his heart, but his hand movements were not ambiguous at all. Yong Zheng only realized when he saw the bandage on her hand and coughed awkwardly, Have you read a book? I have read it. I have read it at home, Qi Xia explained clearly. The rest were read before. Yongjing nodded without asking which past she was. Have you ever read history? I've read it a bit, said Qi Xia, taking a look at the pile of official and unofficial histories she had read before. She decided to give herself some goodwill, so that one day the task would be too difficult and Yongjing felt that the things she drew in the lottery were too garbage, so she gave up directly. History has only been roughly studied. I have studied physics a bit more, such as the blueprint of the generator just now, which I can understand better. If given time and manpower, I should be able to make it. Reading is good, it makes people understand. Yongzheng seemed to have missed her last self-praise sentence. After reading the last notebook in his hand, he finally put down his pen and said, Just now, you helped King Yi block a disaster. What reward do you want? What pursuits can working people have? It's just about having more money, less work, and being close to home. Unfortunately, she couldn't get any of these. Qi Xia thought for a moment and said, How about setting up a small kitchen in my palace? The big pot dishes in the imperial kitchen are really not very delicious, and in this era, there is a shortage of seasoning. However, her inventory is very sufficient. If we could create a small kitchen, we could improve the food. Sure. Yong Zheng was a bit amused. You're quite honest. Others would only say that this is what a servant should do after hearing this. Because I know you are a person with clear rewards and punishments, and extreme love and hate. After all, in later generations, by analyzing your thoughts and behavior patterns alone, you can support many Qin historians. Qi Xia didn't explain. She thought about the boss who liked to paint cakes but never cashed in in her previous life. She felt that Yongzheng had a good feeling of working, not to mention that it was her anime ideal. When I was about to leave, I couldn't help but mention it again. The task of the Empress Dowager moving the palace has a time limit of 30 days. I understand now, Yongzheng nodded at the blueprint she left behind. Since you can understand this blueprint, there's no need to go to the Qianqin Palace to gather and guard the spirits tomorrow afternoon. Come to the Heart Nourishing Hall and recompile this blueprint to make it easier to understand, so that the craftsman can understand it. Qi Xia. I didn't miss hearing it just now. Sure enough, there is no boss in the world who doesn't want to squeeze workers. The Heart Nourishing Hall is located on the side of the Qianqin Palace. When Qi Xia passed by the Yuhua Pavilion, she found out that Yongjing's request for her to gather and guard for half a day was actually considered a benefit. 
the person kneeling in the Qianqing Palace couldn't see the edge at a glance. She passed by from the periphery and saw Guoguiren and Enpromis, who were going to pay respects to the Empress and Empress Dowager together in the morning, kneeling outside the palace near the door. That location is so windy that it can freeze people into ice cubes. In her position, she could only agree with Guoguiren to join them and enjoy the cold breeze there. Okay, she should go work for the Emperor instead. End of this chapter. Chapter 8 Renovation of Small Kitchen You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 8 Renovation of Small Kitchen Chapter 8 In winter, don't look at the bright sunshine, but you can't stop the sharp drop in temperature in recent days. At noon, snowflakes even floated up. Hsiang and Miao Miao heated the charcoal pot in the main house until it was warm. Seeing that Qi Xia had returned, they quickly embraced him with a shawl and said, the young master has come back. We are all worried about it. Auntie, don't worry, I have been in the palace for over two years now and nothing will happen, Qi Xia smiled, as if accepting their kindness. Su Peixing received the decree of Emperor Yongzheng and personally brought the people back. Later, he also followed the people from the Ministry of Internal Affairs to renovate the small kitchen. There are not just one or two families who have a small kitchen in the harem. The people in the Ministry of Internal Affairs are familiar with the road and will soon be renovated. Seeing that Su Peixing had not left yet, he respectfully said, Su Gonggong, everything has been done according to your instructions. If you are constantly looking for any ingredients, please instruct someone to go to the imperial kitchen to collect them. We will definitely send someone to bring them over. Su Peixing didn't know how this person had won the favor of the emperor, but it was probably due to the relationship with Ertai and her help in blocking the bloodbath for Prince Yi today. But as long as the emperor values it, he must serve the people well. Young master, take a look. If there is anything else that needs to be changed, let's tell them together. I want an induction cooker and rice cooker, but we don't have this objective condition either. Qi Xia smiled and said, just have a place where you can cook. She looked around and found that the setting of this small kitchen was similar to what she used at home, and she should be able to get started quickly. She was already very satisfied and said, Thank you, Grandpa Su. You're welcome, Su Peixing waved his hand. Tomorrow, the servant will send Xiao Anzi to pick you up. The emperor has said that you have been serving in the heart-nourishing hall before, and you are most familiar with the furnishings and ornaments in the hall. Please go and organize them, pick out some commonly used items by the late emperor, and let them be buried with the late emperor. Qi Xia I am always impressed by your strange yet uncompromising arguments. The people in Yuhua Pavilion are truly worthy of Yongzheng's request for Yinxiang to personally select them. They all had a keen eye and within a few days, they realized that their master was probably someone who could enjoy themselves. She had already tidied up the warm pavilion for most of the day when she went out. A few soft cushions were placed on the collapsed window, and as soon as the person leaned up, the short table was right beside them. There was a small bottle with a short foot on top, and a wax plum was inserted. A pot of hot tea was brewed on the coffee table, along with a small plate of peanuts and a bowl of cheese. Chi Xia couldn't pick a single flaw, and this can be said to be her dream mansion in the past few years. She leaned against the window holding a handmade stove and watched as snowflakes and goose feathers drifted down, while the pot in Yongha Palace exploded. Since the Empress Dowager smashed Prince Yi out of the Yongha Palace early in the morning, she has been both angry and a bit guilty, and her mood has become increasingly unhappy. Seeing Prince Lian Yinxi still kneeling outside, he couldn't help but feel angry. Having learned from his past experiences and not being able to smash things again, he felt a severe headache. Yin Shi was left here by Yin Xiang early in the morning, neither leaving nor staying. He was happy to see the Empress Dowager become a demon and wished she wouldn't be titled or moved to the palace. When Emperor Ama reinstated his second brother as crown prince, he rebuked him for being disloyal and unfilial. He was born to a lowly person named Xianjiku. He lost his eligibility for succession. 
When Emperor Ama was on his deathbed, he called them all to his side and watched with his own eyes as Zhang Tingyu read the imperial edict and ordered his fourth brother to succeed, thus securing the overall situation. It was not easy for him to get into trouble, but the Empress Dowager's commotion gave them a chance. But on this windy and snowy day, he didn't feel so good kneeling for half a day. Fourth brother, on the other hand, felt sorry for thirteenth brother. He couldn't bear to let him kneel here and find a way to call him away. He probably didn't have this kind of sympathy for him anymore. Ian Shi had no choice but to bow symbolically after a while and said, I respectfully request the Empress Dowager to be granted the title. I count out seventeen or eight times, Yongha Palace finally gave a reply, saying that the Empress Dowager was in a state of illness and needed to rest. Please ask him to go back. When Yin Shi was supported by the eunuch to stand up, his legs were already numb and he had to stand for a long time before he could walk. He didn't say anything, just turned around to look at Yongha Palace, which was blurry in the heavy snow, and let out a low smile. In her early years, Empress Dowager Wuya was only a palace maid. Although she was later granted the title of Empress Dowager De and maintained herself well, even after her fifties this year, she could no longer conceal her old state. She said she had a severe headache, and the servants below were afraid that she might really get angry. No one dared to hide it and quickly reported to the heart-nourishing hall. Yong Jinggang rested for only a quarter of an hour, and he really didn't want to mess around. Thinking of Qi Xia's mission, he came over overnight. Empress Dowager Waya closed her eyes when she saw him enter the door and said, You are the emperor now and you are very busy. There is no need to run back and forth like this. Where did Yin Yang say? Yong Zheng asked the imperial physician, How is the Empress Dowager's health? The imperial physician was caught in this low pressure and dared not say a word more. He only said that the Empress Dowager was overly sad, and she must be able to recover with a few doses of medicine and rest for a few days. Yongjing nodded and asked him to go and decoct medicine. If a person dies, they cannot be resurrected. Ernyang also needs to mourn and not harm her body. If you don't call the 8th, 8th, 13th, and others to anger me, then I won't be that hurt. Seeing no one else around, Waya sat up straight and said, I ask you, your first edict today is to designate the two of them as Prime Minister Wang Minister, and also to be conferred the title of Prince Heshua and rewarded with this and that. On the other hand, 14th, you won't let him do anything. Here we go again. He has listened to this roundabout in his previous life countless times. Yongjing tried his best to suppress his temper and said, Old 14 has not achieved anything and has not done many tasks in his daily life. His son has already given him the title of Baylor. When he achieves success in the future, he will naturally be promoted. The anger that Waya had been holding for a whole day spread all over him, and she lifted her hand and knocked over the tea. If you don't let him do anything, why did he achieve such a feat I won't say anything about old 13. You've been leaning against him from childhood to adulthood, but old eight is nothing. His mother is just a lowly servant of Exayanjaku, and even the late emperor looks down on him. You've even appointed him as a prime minister and minister, and fourteen is your own younger brother. Yongjing brushed off the tea leaves on his sleeve, almost laughing angrily. You see, old fourteen is a treasure, not necessarily others. Old Eight's influence among the high dot ranking ministers is really beyond his comparison. He usually spends a lot of time with Old Eight, but in terms of his ability to win people's hearts, he can't even catch up. Compared to Old Thirteen, he's even more unworthy. If he weren't my younger brother, I wouldn't have indulged him so much. You. You are simply unreasonable. Wuya's chest was sore with anger, panting heavily. Since you don't like him so much, there's no need to give me any honorific title. It's because I, as an empress, didn't teach him well, nor did I teach you brotherly respect. Naturally, I don't deserve the title of Empress Dowager. The mother and son didn't say a word properly and choked up again. Brother and sister, where is his respect? 
Yong Zheng's face turned cold and changed to self-proclaimed, is Huan Yin Yang saying this to force me to death for the sake of fourteenth brother? You'd better think about it. If you force me to death, it's not his turn to hold this position. Why it didn't originally mean that, but when it comes to rushing to the point, she shouldn't take it too far. Less than half an hour after Yong Zheng entered the room, he was angry with her again and left. Wu Yasi patted the table heavily, and tears rolled down his face. You tell me, I raised them a few, but I even raised them to avenge him, he said the nanny beside her has been serving her for almost thirty years and comforted, I see, the emperor originally intended to ease his relationship with you. If you have anything to say, please speak to him well, maybe he will accept it. Don't you know his temper yet? What he believes is that even nine cows can't be pulled back, said Wuya sadly. But he's just such a little brother, blood is thicker than water, why can't we accommodate him? Mammy couldn't say what was wrong, but she always felt that the Empress Dowager was not quite right. Even if she tried to persuade her, she didn't know what to say, so she could only cry with her. Chi Xiaowa pondered for an afternoon at Yuhua Pavilion, but couldn't figure out how to complete this main task. She really wants to say that people like the old lady who are addicted to their own logic will never listen to others. She has seen too many. You reason with her, she talks about emotions with you, you talk about emotions with her, and she suppresses filial piety for you. For such a person, she should suffer a little, and then she will know that she can die without being killed, thanks to the strength of her eldest son Awesome. If it really doesn't work, then let go of the helpful plot, respect the fate of others, and let her suffer from depression. End of this chapter Chapter 9 A Great Play You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 9 A Great Play Chi Xia originally wanted to ask the system to come out and chat, and the previous system would still watch sand sculpture variety shows with her. But this system probably needs to have a high.end, serious attitude, basically not responding to her except for publishing tasks and lucky draws. When it got late at night, Chi Xia was also very annoyed and rubbed her face. Meow meow, do we have melon seeds in our house? Give me a handful, she said when her mind used to be tangled and unable to come up with anything, she used to like to let go of her time and turn on the TV and eat sunflower seeds. I only eat and don't eat, I don't gain weight, and I have a special sense of achievement. Meow Meow stayed with her for a long time playing with pine cones, and her head was dozing away. When she heard this, she quickly stood up and said, there are pine cones. They were just sent by the internal affairs office this afternoon. Are you the main one? I'll help you peel them. No need, no need, Chi Xia took a plate and said. I want to be quiet alone. You go rest. She casually clicked on a family drama in her mind and listened to it haphazardly. After an unknown amount of time, the lights burst out with a crackling sound, and Chi Xia stood up with some enlightenment. Anyway, the system doesn't specify the quality she completes, as long as she completes the literal meaning. The point of relocating the palace is really not feasible. Perhaps you can try changing the plaques of Yongha Palace and Shokong Palace to see if it can be considered as completing the task. I wonder if it's possible to knock out the Empress Dowager and declare her honorific title after accepting the ban. When there was something on her mind, she couldn't sleep soundly. Plus, the north wind outside the room blew all night, and she knelt in the Qianqing Palace in the morning. Qi Xia's mind was still a bit unclear. Kneeling beside him was Guo Guiren. Seeing her rushing over to kneel, he glanced at her and whispered, Xia Chang is here. There's a red tassel on your stove that hasn't been taken off, so keep it. Oh, good, Qi Xia quickly put the stove back into her sleeve and quietly untied the tassel and stuffed it into her sleeve pocket. Thank you very much, sir. When Miao Miao gave it to her in the morning, she was wearing a plain velvet bag outside. On the way, she was so bored that she flipped through it and forgot to put it back in the bag. Guo Guiren curved his eyes at her and knelt down obediently. Qi Xia was still rummaging in her memory about who the kind-hearted noblewoman was from. 
she didn't come up with a reason, only to see a soft couch carried by four eunuchs into the main hall. Subsequently, several maids and palace maids supported a woman and walked out. This woman was dressed in filial piety, with no pearl on her head, and her face turned pale due to the lack of makeup. However, she exuded a delicate and noble aura throughout her body, with a hint of intelligence and arrogance in her eyes compared to the Empress Dowager Wuya she saw yesterday. After getting off the soft couch, she walked straight forward and passed by her, Gung, Nian, and Empress from the side. Finally, she passed over Empress Dowager Wuya and knelt at the front of the line of Empress Dowager. Qi Xia was bewildered and glanced at Guo Guiren beside her, wondering what the situation was. How could anyone be so ignorant and dare to kneel in front of the Empress Dowager? But Guo Guiren's expression was exactly the same as hers, both with an unclear expression. Seeing her looking at her, she whispered, It's Empress Yi. Qi Xia nodded to indicate that she had been taught. Kangxi's Weifu Private Interview Chronicle has played for so many seasons, and Consort Yi, Guo Luo Luo, is still very well dot known among the concubines of Kangxi. Guo Luo Luo came from a wealthy family, and there are records in history that she was highly favored throughout the entire Kangxi dynasty. She had three sons under her command, one of whom died young, and now she still has the fifth and ninth sons. Lao Wu was raised by the Empress Dowager and the Empress Dowager during the Kangxi dynasty. Although he was somewhat inexperienced and did not participate in the usurpation of the throne, he held a relatively elevated position and was already granted the title of Prince Heng during the Kangxi period. Lao Jiu is a loyal supporter of Lao Ba. Empress Yi arrived a little later than others, and this commotion was quite significant. Whether it was the courtiers or the imperial concubines, they could almost see her. The Empress went up to help her, wanting her to step back a bit and come behind the Waya clan. Mother Ifei, come here. But Ifei didn't even give her a glance, let alone talk to her. On the contrary, he glanced at Waya and knelt in front of her as he pleased. It seems that this person did not fail to notice Waya, but intentionally did so. Qi Xia was shocked. Xian said that although the Empress Dowager has not yet been officially appointed, her son has already ascended to the throne. No matter how much you were favored before, now you have changed dynasties. Your son has to make a living under the new emperor without awesome. Is it really appropriate for you to be so arrogant? Isn't this another mother of a mischievous son? Regardless of whether others think it's appropriate or not, Yi Fei's expression is taken for granted. When Wu Ya was in theft as Empress Dowager Da, she ranked behind Empress Yi in terms of family background and favor. During Kangxi's reign, he enjoyed admiring the Yi Fei of Ikuan Palace for rare things such as self-ringing bells and small screens. The Empress Dowager and Empress Dowager also took more care of Ikuan Palace because they raised her fifth eldest brother. In her early years, she suffered a lot of grievances because of Ifei. Later on, as everyone grew older and new members were introduced to the palace one after another, they also passed the age of showing signs of favoritism and red eyes. With the help of her two sons, she gradually became on equal footing with Empress Yi and remained peaceful for so many years. Now that the late emperor has gone, how dare Empress Yi show her face? Wu Ya frowned and looked at the grandmother beside her. The grandmother understood and approached to help Empress Yi up, saying, Empress Yi, you are standing in the wrong position. Ifei shook off her hand with disgust on her face, as if looking at something dirty. She slapped her in the face and scolded, I am Ifei, who was personally appointed by the late emperor, and my position is already before your master. Your master has nothing to say, what kind of thing are you? How dare you come and pull me? Oh, this big show is a bit intense. Qi Xia has a feeling of watching TV dramas live. The closest grandmother around her was slapped in front of her, almost like hitting her in the face. How can Waya endure this? He immediately stood up and said, Guo Luo Luo. You are reckless. If you don't pay respects to the AI family, they can empathize with your excessive sadness and not blame you too much. 
you have to take extra steps to cause trouble in front of the spirit of the late emperor. I think you are really sick and confused. Empress Yi looked at her coldly, a bit more condescending than her, and said, I remember that Empress Dowager Da was not honored by the Empress Dowager. I believe our emperor grew up next to Empress Xi Oiren and ascended the throne. Perhaps he even wanted to add a title to Empress Xi Oiren, without considering her as his biological mother. Waya was so angry that one Buddha ascended to heaven and two Buddhas were born, and her hands trembled. Emperor, I am extremely filial. My family has only been sick for a few days and my strength is not strong enough, so I haven't been officially granted the title yet. Now that I have recovered, I naturally need to be honored. Do you want to receive the title of Empress Dowager? Yi Fei snorted coldly. Then wait until Empress Dowager to receives the title of Empress Dowager and teach me a lesson. Implicitly, honorific titles are not something you can accept as you please, it all depends on whether the Emperor gives them or not. After saying, you, you, twice without a word of rebuttal, Waya clenched her grandmother's hand and said, go and ask the Emperor. Today, the AI family will rectify the smoke and malaria in the harem in the name of the Empress Dowager. You go ask him, he may not allow it. Uh, this situation is heading towards after a moment of confusion, Chi Xia realized. End of this chapter Chapter 10 Decomposed Drawings You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 10 Decomposed Drawings Chapter 10 Outside the Palace, Yongzheng, Prince Hang Yinqi, and Prince Yi Yinxiang seemed to be able to make calculations. They had just finished their argument and came over to end it no sooner or later. Fifth Lord Yin Qi helped his mother Yi Taifei up and said, Aunt Yi, the imperial physician said you need to rest and not come out for a walk. Why don't you listen to the imperial physician? Yongjing's face turned cold and said, I'm afraid Empress Yi is not just overly sad, but has no respect for the Empress Dowager or me. Yin Xiang made up the situation and said, Fifth brother should advise Empress Yi well. Your Majesty, please calm down. Empress Yi was already sick last month, and after Empress Dowager Ama passed away, she was also overly sad. I don't think she intended to contradict the Empress Dowager. Now that everything has been sorted out and the Empress Dowager has been honored, Empress Yi will not be like this in the future. Yin Chi quickly followed up and said, Yes, that's exactly what Thirteenth Brother said. I request the Emperor to give the Empress Dowager a honorific title. Qi Xia clapped loudly in her mind. Xian said that these brothers sang together seamlessly. The Empress and others responded and knelt down one after another. The Empress Dowager finally regained her composure from her previous anger, but the play had already reached this point. She climbed onto the stage herself and begged for the title that the emperor wanted. It would be difficult for her to slap herself in front of the courtiers and concubines in the harem, as she eventually received the title with half effort. Chi Xia pulled out the system panel and looked at it. The progress bar for the main task was indeed halfway completed. This is indeed a great play, but it is a play directed by someone who has already written the script. He truly deserves to be the male god I like. Psychology mentors have to impress you. Surprisingly, I could think of using Empress Dowager E to stimulate her. I just don't know how much benefit I have given to Consort E, making her willing to take such risks and carry a bad reputation of being arrogant and disrespectful, causing trouble in front of the spirit of the late emperor. Chi Xia couldn't help but turn her head to look at Yi Fei. Everyone was now paying attention to the Empress Dowager's side. The woman, who had just been full of arrogance, had quietly taken off her flamboyant posture and knelt on the ground in a proper manner, gently caressing the edge of the huge coffin with one hand. After a while, she closed her eyes slightly and tears streamed down her face. In the afternoon, Qi Xia followed Yongzheng's instructions yesterday and arrived at the heart-nourishing hall. When Su Peixing saw her coming, he politely led her in. Yongjing was still eating when he saw her come in and gestured for Su Peixing to put away all the things. 
Qi Xia took the opportunity to look at the emperor's lunch and found that it was not much different from what was sent to the Yuhua pavilion. It was just glutinous rice, accompanied by a stewed tofu, green leafy vegetables, and a bowl of crispy cheese, but it didn't look very delicious. Half of the main task is completed, said Qi Xia, who had unlimited imagination in his mind. However, when he saw a real person, he became a regular and obedient Xiao Chang. He quickly reported his work, there is still one palace relocation left to complete. Yongjing nodded and said, Prince Hang, Prince Lian, and the Empress have gone to invite them. The blueprint for the degenerator is still on the table, you go and take a look. This blueprint is not difficult for her, while Qi Xia is making annotations and thinking about the task haphazardly. In the morning, the Empress Dowager received her honorific title under the stimulation of Empress Yi, which will bring her back to her senses. I wonder if she will retract. Yong Zheng was looking at the folding chair on the side, occasionally checking her progress. After two glances, he noticed that although her subordinates were not slow, they were absent-minded. He then turned to the folding chair and knocked on the table, saying, What's wrong? What's wrong? No, 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 Qi Xia touched her nose, feeling as if she had been caught fishing. She quickly said in a serious tone, I was just thinking that you had Empress Yi perform that scene, it was really a stroke of genius. Yongzheng remained silent. In her previous life, Empress Yi also dragged her sick body to the front of Empress Dowager Ama's spirit, crossed over the Empress Dowager and kowtowed in mourning. Of course, she was still concerned about Lao Jiu's life, and her behavior was not as outrageous as it is today. It was just that she didn't know what kind of mentality she was in and secretly competed with. At that time, the Empress Dowager didn't even have time to speak up, so he pressed the matter down. Not only did he reprimand Empress Yi, but he also knocked on Prince Hang and Lao Jiu. As a result, the Empress Dowager still refused to be honored in any way possible. This time, he had an early communication with Yi Fei and Lao Wu, indicating that they were going to make a scene, so he decided to make a bigger fuss and fiercely humiliate the Empress Dowager. Lao Wu pleaded in unison, saying that he would never dare to trespass or humiliate the Empress Dowager, nor would he dare to cause trouble in front of the Empress Dowager's spirit. Yi Fei knew that Wu Yishu refused to be granted the title, and hesitated for a moment before agreeing. She even bluntly stated that she could stimulate Wu Yishu to speak up and seek the title herself. Just ask for the Emperor's favor. He thought that Consort Yi wanted to go to the Prince Hengqin's mansion to retire. There was also a tradition in the previous dynasty that if the concubines of the late emperor had adult princes, they could retire at the prince's mansion. However, Empress Yi shook her head and said, I am already in my last years. If there are any more arrogant and reckless disturbances in the spiritual hall tomorrow, I will have no face in surviving. It is entirely up to the emperor to decide what to do. I am not asking for this, I only hope that the emperor will spare Inchi's life in the future. Even if he makes a big mistake, he can still consider his love for his son and let him save his life, even if he is imprisoned in Inchi mansion and spend the latter half of his life in peace. Yongjing originally thought he wouldn't agree. He has always believed that his own merits and demerits should be borne. If a person commits adultery and commits crimes that harm the country and the people, no matter how much shade his ancestors have, they cannot cover up their sins. But by a stroke of fate, he agreed and promised to let Empress Dowager Yi leave the palace as usual and rest in the Yin Chi mansion. He remained silent, and Qi Xia sighed in her heart. After flattering, the boss feels awkward if he doesn't speak up. I even miss Princey a bit, after all, when he was here, Yongjing was not that difficult to serve. Qi Xia scratched her head and said, Why isn't your highness Yi Wang here today? He personally went to the manufacturing office to select craftsmen, Yongjing finally took up the topic. Once your drawings are modified, let those craftsmen try to make them. Qi Xia exclaimed, Oh, and suddenly remembered her side mission. Your highness, could you please choose another palace-made eunuch who understands agricultural work to place in Yuhua Pavilion? 
The side mission requires planting experimental fields, and I really don't know how to do it. After all, since she could remember, the whole country has basically been a large dot-scale mechanized planting. Yongjing did not ask, let's wait for you to get the seeds first. Qi Xia originally intended to say that even if the Empress Dowager reneged and refused to move the palace, she still had a way to get stuck. But seeing that Yongjing's interest was not high, she felt embarrassed to mention it again. It seems that she doesn't expect the mother-son relationship to be similar. There is nothing to say in the two rooms, and one can only relieve awkwardness by working hard. Qi Xia was afraid that Yongjing would find her distracted again, so she threw herself into the blueprint and focused solely on her work. As she finished the blueprint on her right side, she found that the sky outside was getting a bit dark as she looked up. This time, the work efficiency has been recognized by the boss. Seeing that it was time for dinner, Yongjing slightly checked her drawings and said, I don't see much left. After eating, we can continue. It happened to be snowing outside. Let the carriage take you back later. Qi Xia. Unexpectedly, it was already the Qing dynasty, and she could still encounter capitalists who exploited migrant workers by providing dinner at 6 o'clock and reimbursing taxi fares at 8 o'clock. What's even more tragic is that when she didn't work overtime and only deducted money, now she's dying if she doesn't work. End of this chapter.